What's going on, everyone? Happy Friday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive for COVID, flu, or anything else, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long-term issues and no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Friday edition of the Pandemic Update for Friday, March 8th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on not only just COVID, but any other virus that could be a threat to you. Let's face it, we need a program that is daily, seven days a week, that tells you about the viruses that are circulating in the United States and around the world. So it is good to stay informed. If you want to stay informed, subscribe down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it, and of course, share this with anyone you know. Now, today we'll mostly be talking about the United States, but hey, some days we do get into some international data, and I think we're going to try and do that at some point over the weekend. Today, we're going to do a few news stories, of course, take a look at some wastewater sites, and some CDC data. CDC usually updates on Fridays, don't think they have yet, that's okay, we can get to it tomorrow because we do have some states to look at as well. All right, we have to start off with measles, which has been an ongoing issue in the United States and really around the world, and Canada as well. So we're going to talk about measles, and measles is now starting to show up in Chicago. That's right. Chicago now reports their first measles case since 2019 amid rising infections across the United States. Chicago health officials have confirmed the city's first measles case since 2019. A rising number of infections across the United States, as we know, and this was confirmed on Thursday, and I think we're going to see more cases pop up. I've been saying this all along. I think we're going to continue to see measles cases pop up around the United States. This is very similar to what happened with MPOX just a few years ago, how we saw a rise in cases. It went up, it lasted a couple months, and then we saw a drop. I'm hoping that's how this is going to work, and it's not going to be anything prolonged, but as of right now, hey, there's a lot of people that have not gotten their measles vaccine, you know, for kids. Because back in 2020, you know, when we didn't know much about COVID, let's be honest, we still don't know a lot. Uh, when we didn't know much, there were a lot of people that were afraid to use health care or go out and get vaccines. And now with the COVID vaccine being so politicized, there's a lot of people, it's spilling over to other vaccines. People are not getting the measles vaccine, and it's a problem. Or there's also another problem. People who had it 50 year plus years ago, maybe it's worn off. I'm just speculating there, but it's the possibility that that has happened as well. But the majority of these cases have been in kids in the United States. There have been a few adult cases as well. Moving on now to Canada. In Canada, two new measles cases have been added. Their total number of cases is now up to 12. And the new cases are in the city of Montreal. That was added to my website by moderator Steve. And remember, anyone can sign up for my website. It's free to do so. You can post. You can add whatever you want to the topics. There's a lot of different categories. I mean, look at this. You can post about measles. H5N1. Haven't updated that in some time. But yeah, H5N1 is a problem as well. And... We'll be talking about that in just a moment. RSV shot for infants, 90% effective against hospitalizations, the CDC says. This is some really good news. The RSV preventative shot infants for infants, which was approved last year, was 90% effective at preventing hospitalizations, according to an analyst released by the Centers for Disease Control. So that's some really good news. Now I have to show you this. This map comes from Betty Jung. And they say on March 7, 2024, the last updated 3-524, U.S. bird flu situation summary for the last 30 days. Well, let's take a look at this map that they have here. And you can see here, in the blue, darker blue, that's 10 or more cases. Well, Maine now has 17 cases. Massachusetts now has 18 reports of avian bird flu in the last 30 days. So that's not good. And these are just uh, reported detections of it. I shouldn't say total number of cases, but uh, New Hampshire, two. Vermont, one. New York, ten. My state of Pennsylvania has had three. Virginia, two. South Carolina, two. Florida, five. Mississippi, three. Illinois, one. One in Indiana as well. One in New Mexico. 
one in Oregon, and three have been reported in California at this time. All right, let's take a look at air qualities around the United States. Let's see what's going on today. And we do see some poor air qualities today across Chicago and portions of the Great Lakes, and it's in the moderate category. That's not good. We also see moderate Houston, Texas. Take a look at that. From New Orleans, Louisiana, or on over to Houston, Texas, and even further south, uh, down towards Corpus Christi, some uh, bad air quality for you as well. Corpus Christi, if you're there, bad air quality. Salt Lake City, some minor air quality problems. And the West Coast, we do see a scattering of yellow to oranges, which it's not great. You probably want to wear your N95 or a respirator if you're going outside. Take a look at this. Iowa. Yes, it spills over to you as well from the Great Lakes. Cedar Rapids. Wow, I'm actually seeing some 100s there. Not good. If you're going outside, please be mindful, especially if you have asthma, COPD. Limit your time outside in those areas today. All right. We have to take a look at uh, fire, in not fire instance, Philadelphia EMS calls for Thursday. 714 were reported. I'm thinking it's going to be higher today. Don't know. I can't see a live looking, but Montgomery County, just about two hours ago, was absolutely insanity. Yes, I had to tweet this. 25 active calls right now for Montgomery County. This was about 9.46 a.m., and you can see it was just crazy. There were multiple cardiac arrests, strokes, and a whole bunch of other things. Let's do a live looking, and a live looking shows better right now but we do see look at this multiple respiratory emergencies and a stroke at this time only 10 calls right now they were up to 25 at 9 30 that's just absolute insanity taking a look now at chester county pennsylvania also a suburb of philadelphia and we do see a couple respiratory emergencies we do see some other things heart problems cardiac arrest man there have been a lot of cardiac arrest calls today, not just in Montgomery, but Chester County as well. I've been seeing them all morning long. Not a good thing. That That's actually a really bad thing. Taking a look at the Walgreens COVID positivity, 13.9% this week, down 3.5%, 17.4% last week's number. Testing, it's not great. 2,595. A lot of states are not reporting. All right, let's take a look now at a few wastewater sites. I thought we would look at Belmar, New Jersey. That's like the central portion of the New Jersey shore. But they do have all year round population. So let's see what's going on there. COVID at this time, it's showing high here. And actually, it is slightly starting to rise again. RSV is high, rose a little bit, now it's dropping. Influenza A, rising slightly. Influenza B, leveled off, but it has seen a rise once again. HMPV, not much finish, it's dropping at this time. Norovirus did see a sharp rise now it's dropped a little bit there have been some detections of mpox and some detections of hepatitis a all right let's go out further to the west how about we come out here to see what's going on in alabama shall we we have not taken a look at alabama in a while let's go to the village creek which is in the birmingham area 200,000 population it's saying high for covid but really it has uh, leveled off at this time even slightly starting to drop rsv it's low not much of a detection of it now. Influenza A is dropping. Influenza B is dropping. Norovirus is high and look at that. It is steadily rising at this time. Some detections of Mpox and some detections of Hepatitis A at this time. Continuing on. What do we say we continue further to the west? How about we come out here to Wichita Falls, Texas. And we take a look and see what's going on there. And in Wichita Falls, Texas. Falls, Texas, low for COVID, medium for RSV, but look at that. It's saying medium, but that's really low levels. Influenza A, not much of an issue. Influenza B, says high, but here on the chart, it's low at this time. Norovirus, ever so slight rise, not much, just a slight rise at this time. And Mbox, yeah, it's looking like this site's having that issue again, where it's showing the same dates and the same spots for every wastewater site. Some hepatitis A detection as well. Let's go further to the west. How about we come out to Salt Lake City, Utah? Let's see what's going on there. And in Salt Lake City, Utah, we do see that COVID, it's in the medium at this time, although it is low on a chart. Uh, RSV is high, and yeah, it's slightly starting to rise again. Influenza A, low. Influenza B, mom. Eh, it's saying high, but 
It's, it's steady at this time. It's not rising yet. Norovirus is starting to rise. Steady little rise here going on for norovirus. HMPV, not much of an issue. And there are some detections of hepatitis A. All right, moving on. Drum roll, please. Let's see if we have the CDC data in yet. If not, like I said, we will take a look at it tomorrow. Now, this is looking like the same data from before. We're not seeing the hospital updates. So, unfortunately, I can't show you CDC data, but I will show you this. JN.1 variant is at 92.3%. JN.1.13 is at 3.3%. JN.1.18 is at 1.8%. All right, now taking a look at New Jersey. Hospitalizations. 481 hospitalizations in New Jersey with four hospitals not reporting. 66 out of 70. We don't know if it's a bigger hospital or small hospital. It could be a bigger hospital. I'll tell you why. Because uh, this is a pretty decent-sized drop over yesterday's count. 28 people on a ventilator, 62 people in the ICU. Discharges, 101. All right, taking a look now at New York State. 948 cases added. Hospitalizations at this time are at 874. We did get Colorado's update yesterday, and that was 128 hospitalizations. That's an increase by 10 from the previous week, which was at 118. And cases reported, they are down slightly, 1,319. All right, to continue on, we have to switch to another web browser. I know, doesn't that sound crazy? But hey, we have more states to take a look at. So let's take a look at what's going on in the state of Connecticut. Influenza in Connecticut this week, 642 cases are being reported so far this week. This is incomplete, though. And COVID-19, current week, 336. Prior week was 47. Again, it's incomplete for the week, so it'll likely go up higher. And when we look at it next week, it'll come over in this previous week category. Well, let's take a look at the previous week. They've had a 1,554 influenza cases, 935 COVID cases last week, and 109 RSV cases. To date this season, they've had 22,381 flu cases. But I must stress, and I, this goes for any state, prior to the COVID days, prior to the COVID days, how many people actually went out to get tested for influenza? Yes, some people did, but let's be honest, the vast majority probably did not. I know I've had probably had flu in my lifetime, probably a couple times. I've never actually went out to have a positive flu test. Now that we have, uh, that we're in the COVID era, now that we're more educated and no more, would I go out and get a test for flu? Of course I would. I would try and get tested for flu. But 10 years ago, I don't know that I would have done that. I probably would have, you know, gone and got some uh, cold and flu medication. So, hey, it's just a sign of the times. And there's actually been some benefits, some things that we have learned about during a pandemic. Like, for example, if we get sick, we now know, hey, mask, mask, quarantine, stay home. You know, these things, we've actually learned some lessons from the COVID pandemic. Although, the vast majority of people in the United States have thrown those right out the window. Yeah, I, I, I know. It's terrible. Everything seems like everything we have learned, people are not uh, following through with. All right, continuing on now. Let's take a look and see if we have an update out of California yet. I doubt we do. It's very early. In fact, I think we'll probably just skip over this. Let's see here. Do we have an update? No. It's, it's too early for California to come in. All right, Los Angeles. I did refresh this. This is updated, and we are seeing hospitalizations for COVID continue to drop in L.A., COVID deaths are dropping after this time. They had a little brief rise once again back in February, but they are dropping once again. Cases are dropping. Testing, eh, slightly dropping, but not that much. So that's good to see. Now let's take a look at Chicago. Hospitalizations up ever so slightly. So uh, they were 15 the prior week. It's 16 this week. Confirmed cases down 106 versus 133 the prior week. And hospital beds in use is down by 1.9%. Emergency department visits, relatively flat at this time. And taking a look at uh, vaccinations, and it does show here that only uh, 3,155 people took a COVID vaccination of some sort, whether it be a booster or a series at this time. Massachusetts, 13.6% of all emergency department visits are still for an acute respiratory disease. Now, that's actually not good. That's not coming down all that fast. Influenza level, it's still moderate at this time. COVID-19 emergency department level, it's minimal. That's the lowest category. COVID-19 
uh, mission level, it's low at this time. That's just slightly above minimal. That's not terrible. It's down from where it was. All right, taking a look now. I have to refresh this. Taking a look now at the state of Washington, which did update on Wednesday. Good to know. They're back. They're doing a Wednesday update. I often don't say it must come in really late because when we do our updates on when the afternoon time frame, I often do not see this updated on Wednesdays. So, OK, interesting percent of emergency department visits, COVID down 18 percent, influenza down 23 percent, RSV down 25 percent, admissions, COVID down 20 percent, influenza down 11 percent, RSV down 40 percent. And people in the ICU, they have 24 for COVID, down by 1. 13 for influenza, down by 3. So really good news right now in the great state of Washington. So that is good to see. And do we have an update out of Kentucky? Yes, we do have an update out of Kentucky at this time. And it's, as you can see here on the charts, these are all diseases. RSV, influenza, and COVID, which are the ones that they're tracking. Take a look at this. The charts, it's showing things are dropping at this time. Can we do COVID individually? Yes, we can. And it is trending lower in Kentucky at this time. So this is some good news. Alrighty, folks, that does it for today's pandemic update. A quick note going into the weekend. We're coming closer to St. Patrick's Day. I know here in Philadelphia, I believe our St. Patrick's Day parade is this weekend. And we'll start seeing these things that are called bar crawls, pub crawls, as they are called. Please don't participate in that. I'm not trying to be anti-Irish or anti-American or anything. I'm just telling you, if you don't want to get sick, don't go to these crowded events, please. And if you are going to go, mask up. I'm going to make a confession. I went to a crowded event. I went to the Philadelphia Flowers. You may have seen me tweet. I was downtown. But we took precautions. Three of us went. We all masked up. And I actually got an Aeronet reading that was in the 800s. I masked up. I was extremely careful. I am going to test myself tomorrow. So far, I think I'm going to be negative. I feel fine. And I, um, like I said, N95 mask. I avoided the crowded sections. And I think it worked out well. I did see some other people masking, which that, my friends, is a good thing. But it was not enough. It was not enough at all. Alrighty. So, yes, going into the weekend, please be extremely careful. More so with these... Uh, these uh, parades and these bar crawls, just don't do them. Please, don't. That's asking for infection because if you're going to a bar crawl, that means you have to remove your mask. That means, yeah, you get the general idea here. So we'll see you all again tomorrow for the Saturday edition of the pandemic. If you're going to be doing any activities this weekend, be safe about it. If you learned anything today, give this a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel down below. And if you know anyone that needs to see these updates, by all means, share them with anyone you know. The more people we keep safe, the better. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all again next time. Have a fantastic weekend, everyone. See you next time.